Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of the Motherland Experience. It's your girl Naya here and today I have some very amazing guests in store for you. I'm going to be sitting down and chatting with this lovely mother and daughter team and we're going to be discussing their journey from Jamaica to the U.S. and ultimately to the motherland. We're going to be talking about some amazing experience they have had, overall triumphs, and just most importantly, gratitude. So sit back, relax, and let's go. I am sitting here with this lovely mother and daughter duo. They're so cute. They're just absolutely <laughs> awesome. So please help me welcome Mitzi and Miss Hyacinth. Hyacinth. Oh, that name is so gorgeous, but it is a tongue twister for me. So Miss <laughs> Hyacinth to the show. Hi, you guys. We are oh, doing very good. well. Oh, that's doing fine. awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the channel. So please, can you share with us where you guys are from? Well, we are from Jamaica originally um okay. but i've lived in the state since i was 19 so i've been around mm -hmm. here and there okay mm -hmm. all right and you're from yeah, jamaica from as that, well yes <coughs> and i was i'm in the state from since 80 86 mm -hmm. and um after a while i just leave from the state mm -hmm. and go back to jamaica Okay. Yes. So where were you guys living in the States? Which state were you guys? At? I'm coming from Houston, Texas. Oh, okay. So Houston, <laughs> yes. Texas in the house. Yes. All right. I have a soft spot in my heart for people oh. from Texas because I have family that's there. Oh, so, okay. okay. Wonderful. So I was like from Florida, Jamaica, mm -hmm. Florida. Oh, okay. You know, so you yeah. were kind of like fluctuating. First, I was in New York. I live in New York for the first time. Mm -hmm. And then I go to Florida and from Florida back to Jamaica. So I just back and forth until mm -hmm. I decide to go somewhere else. Oh, got you, <laughs> got you. Well, that's yeah. really awesome that you made that transition from Jamaica to the States. How mm -hmm. was that for you? Well, it was for the first, I did only want to go and visit. Mm -hmm. But then I did not get the opportunity to get a visa to visit. So they say I have to file, my sister have to file for me. So um, then she filed for me and I then bring up my children. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we were hard living in New York. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that nice, but I didn't love it. Oh, you didn't no, love it at I first? I didn't love it, no. mm, Was it kind of like the hustle and bustle for yes, you? Yes, and mm -hmm. that's why I moved to Florida. Mm. Yeah. Okay, got yes. it, got it. So you're like a Houston, Texas girl a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, but I have doubled in many states. Um, mm -hmm. As my mom said that I, we moved from Jamaica to New York City. Mm -hmm. After six years, I realized I had my first child and that wasn't it. Right. I needed to be somewhere where she'll be able to grow up properly. Mm. So I decided to try um, Florida oh, and I was there for a bit and um, you know things were okay until mm -hmm. it's like a lot of snowbirds were coming down people from New York City people really? from Canada they're all moving down and things were just changing constantly Wow! and uh, because I was a single parent mm -hmm. I found that you know, I just couldn't survive in, in all of this. So I had to relocate. Mm -hmm. um, and then I relocated to Georgia. Mm, so it was kind of a little more slow. It was kind of a more slow pace, Georgia type of yeah. vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. you, yeah. got yeah. you. Yeah. And um, so um, even though I was born in the city, in mm -hmm. Jamaica, I have um, found myself moving a lot when I came here to America. Mm -hmm. um, they have a saying, home is where the heart is. That's very true. Yes. Yeah. And I guess, you know, just like a dog, if you don't find that spot, mm -hmm. you just keep moving until <laughs> right. you find yeah. that, that spot. That perfect spot. That yes, perfect that location. you can lay down. So it's mm -hmm. like you keep spinning round and round until you find that comfortable spot to mm -hmm. really rest your head so mm. i think in somewhat sense that's me 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Because, because <laughs> um, I was from Jamaica to New York City, mm-hmm. from New York City to Florida, from Florida to Georgia, from Georgia wow. to Houston, Texas. <laughs> wow. And then at some point, um, there were some challenges because they've been challenges. So, mm-hmm. you know, I had to move again. I went back to Florida only because of my daughter. Mm-hmm. She was born in New York City and she grew up in Florida. So she felt that that would where she would be able to manage. Mm -hmm. But it didn't work out. She realized, oh, no. So I told her, I said, we are going to stay here for two years. Mm -hmm. If you want to stay, then you have that two years to get yourself settled. If not, then I will leave you. And I'm going back to Texas. <laughs> oh, I heard that. I bet you like, Texas, that's the place to be. I want to go back to Texas. <laughs> well, well, truth be told, um, one of the reasons that found me, my, I found myself in Texas, actually, because mm-hmm. Georgia was kind of nice and rural, only right. for transportation to get out into Atlanta mm-hmm. was a little bit of a challenge. But um, I was studying. I was in college. Mm-hmm. And um, I was studying culinary arts. Ooh, okay. And so um, somewhere I was trying to figure out, I, I wanted this when I was young because mm-hmm. I love cooking. I love baking mostly. Mm. And um, I didn't acquire it at that time. Mm-hmm. So at my age, when I got into college and I saw all those young people, I just start saying, okay, Mitzi, (laughs) how are you going to find yourself when you get out? Mm -hmm. So I said, um, my mom, Mm -hmm. she has always been uh, a person that works for herself. Even Mm -hmm. if she worked for someone, somewhere she'll just break and start doing her own business of things. Like so a true um, she boss, huh? <laughs> yes. So um, from that, I decided that I will venture off into personal chef. Oh wow! And so I was, I kept on investigating oh. what are the things that I needed. And so as I got to the end, I was now speaking to a personal chef instructor, and she told me. I asked her, what do you need else to be able to get off into that? Mm -hmm. She said, you're already doing it. And I said, okay, that's good. (laughs) So uh, I did some extra um, uh, advanced baking because Mm -hmm. that's what I like the most. And um, and then once I was finished, Mm -hmm. somewhere I had a dream that uh, I jump up out of it. Don't remember what it was about, but. I just said, so is Texas. I said, wow. Wow. I'm not sure what that means, but. Right, exactly. Knowing me, Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to find out what it meant. So I was talking to my mom and I told her, I'm going to go to Texas. And I started Mm -hmm. talking to a few of my church family. And one Mm -hmm. of the sisters said to me, oh, um, I used to live outside of Houston. Mm -hmm. And the moment she mentioned Houston, I said, okay, now I'll go look up because at least I knew a city name. So I looked it up and I told my mom about it and she wanted to come on the ride. So we... (laughs) (laughs) She wanted to come with you. Yeah, so we went and Mm -hmm. uh, check out everything, my daughter and my um, son and Mm -hmm. my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. You know, from there, I was in Texas until they had um, a hurricane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just before the hurricane, that's when my daughter decided she wanted to move. And since she had kids, mm-hmm. I wanted to, um, as a single parent, from one single parent to another, I had mm-hmm. to understand her circumstances exactly. and be able to be there, a support for her. Um, so I moved all of us to Florida wow. and that's how, and that's you how know, that happened. Yeah. But we moved right back to Houston. <laughs> but you're like, Houston was calling you. Well, it, yeah, you know, because, yeah. you know, when, um, I've lived in Florida for 11 years. So uh-huh. when I moved out, you know, they have a saying when you, when you 
uh, leave from something, you don't mm -hmm. look back. That's true. Like, don't so, look at the past. Don't look back. Keep moving forward. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I felt like going back to Florida, knowing what I know, it's not going to help me. And mm -hmm. it's not going to help you because things has changed within that time. Right. I lived there for 11 years and I had already moved to Georgia and I was there for eight years. So that's eight years of change that you don't know about. And then exactly. from there, you know, you have to be able to push forward. So when mm -hmm. she found out that she couldn't manage, mm -hmm. she decided to leave us there. So she didn't finish that two years. Oh, wow. She left us there and she went and got herself a place. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, everything happens for a reason. It sounds like mm -hmm. you guys really yeah. went mm -hmm. on a journey, even in the U.S. Yes. So speaking of a journey, mm -hmm. you guys finding yourself in the motherland. Yes. Okay, yes. that yes. is awesome. Yes. So yes. how long have you been here in Ghana? Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, we have been here now about two, two weeks two weeks uh okay. november early november we came in mm -hmm. so we've been here for two weeks now and um i'm loving it Ooh, that's i'm what I very much here. loving it i have <laughs> always wanted to come to africa mm -hmm. and um i just knew i've met so many people from africa uh mm -hmm. mainly nigerians because of the states that i've gone to mm -hmm. But um, in college, I had a few Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. And um, when I uh, ran into someone, you know, and we started making conversation and stuff, mm -hmm. for some reason, I just felt like even the friends that I was meeting online or in person, I knew that I was going to make it to Africa where I didn't know. And frankly, at that time, I didn't really care. Right. As long as I was in the motherland, <laughs> exactly. that's all that mattered to me. Mm -hmm. But um, about 2019, because 2018, I left Florida. Mm -hmm. 2017 was when they had the hurricane. So in 2018, uh, 19, I came back to Houston. Mm -hmm. And that's when... Um, you know, I started saying that I wanted to make a change yeah. because some place you're in America and it's not the way you expect it to be, Exactly. you know, mm -hmm. um, and you constantly have to struggle to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. You have to fight because uh, fight for living mm -hmm. because of your your complexion. Yes. So that is the first wrong you have done. And mm -hmm. then add in the rest of stuff to it. Um, you know, you try to uh, try to make life for yourself and you see that constant struggle mm -hmm. and you're trying to find out um, how can you make a change where you won't have to struggle like this anymore. Life is about struggle, mm -hmm. but you shouldn't have to struggle because of who you are or what you look like. Exactly. You and know? that's what goes on in the yes. West. And that's kind of what coming here as a person from the diet score we're getting mm -hmm. away from. You yeah. know, and being here in the motherland, you feel so free. Oh. Here in Ghana and in yeah. Africa, you feel really free. And just from what you're telling me, you know, that's a freedom. Yes, you know, yes, that's a freedom yes, for yes, you. yes. And that's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. It really is. That's is. absolutely it awesome. Is. So is. kind of like you coming to Ghana, you were escaping that. Yes, moment. yes. Mm -hmm. And always thinking of, so um, as I, as I was getting up to that point i think my my uh brother mm -hmm. um before beforehand uh, i've been telling my mom oh i'm going to africa i'm going to africa <laughs> and she she would just like oh don't pay me any mind <laughs> you're paying no mind okay <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that wasn't um, my dream <laughs> so my brother <laughs> my um I think I was looking for a land because, you know, like I said, I wanted to get out. Mm -hmm. I just felt like it was, and this wasn't the first time I felt like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like a spirit yearning to get out yeah. of the West. Uh, so when I had my, my, my last boy, um, at that moment, 
uh, between my second my second child mm -hmm. and my last child. Uh, at that moment, I was feeling I wanted to leave. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to figure out now, where do I go? Because my parents are here, mm -hmm. my siblings are here, most of my mom's family is here. So, and I'm a city girl. So right. where exactly do I go? So I was thinking to move to Canada or England because mm -hmm. I have family there to try. Mm -hmm. And um, after going through that rough patch, I decided to keep trying. And those are reasons why I kept moving. Mm, okay. I kept moving because I needed to find somewhere where I wouldn't have to go through all of it. You know, you're looking for a sense of peace. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, I was now looking for, when my mom went back home, looking for a piece of land. And I, I looked online and I mm -hmm. saw something and I told my mom, can you and my brother go check it out? So mm -hmm. they were having some kind of difficulty and they're telling me the price. And I was like, mm -hmm. so I got <laughs> kind of agitated right away. I said, you know what? Mm -hmm. It seems like even coming home is a problem. <laughs> so I started saying, I might as well go to Africa. Right, <laughs> they might as well, right? <laughs> so um, she says, stop your noise. How are you gonna see your siblings? Mm. You know, and she was just trying to, I said, mom, what are you talking about? When you think about all um, you left from Jamaica, all the way to the state that was leaving mm. so what difference yeah. does it make if you went to the motherland so from there i just was on that mission mm. i i have to find a way and my second oldest brother he left went to gambia and the moment he left it convinced everybody else i was like come Yes, it's party. almost like I was there talking, but he not did me. the action. <laughs> so you. my mom was not there yet, but I think somehow, somewhere, the mm. spirit was really trying to let her see that she needs to make that very same move. Um, yes. Because when she moved from Jamaica mm -hmm. to Gambia, she didn't even go visit. She just really? went. <laughs> wow. So she you, just went. You just she went. didn't even know <laughs> what she was going to face, mm. what's going to go on. And my brother wasn't there. He had left and um, he spent a year in Gambia and then he went back to um, Florida where he was staying. Mm -hmm. But my daughter went with her and I was asking, how, how is it? He said, mom, you got to come for yourself because mm. the way I feel, it's hard to express. But when she got back, she felt that is where she wanted to go. She, that she wanted to come mm. back to Africa. So she had booked my ticket mm. for me to go visit and mm. see what it's like. And I wanted to come to Ghana mm -hmm. from before. <laughs> That was what I had planned in my mind. Mm -hmm. So when I heard that it was open, there's no more COVID matter and all right. of that stuff. I said, okay, baby. <laughs> yeah, I started looking for a ticket and all of that stuff and it wasn't working. I said, oh, we got to do something. All right, this has, gotta, this has got to work. This got to mm -hmm. work. <laughs> and so I decided, you know what? We're going to reroute our ticket. Mm. So I rerouted my mom's because mm. she wanted to come. She wanted, uh, she came to America to take care of some stuff. Mm. And she was going to go back to Gambia. So we were going to travel back with her. But it turned out that since I said I wanted to come here to Ghana, mm. she says, okay, I will come to Ghana with you when you come to Gambia. Mm. But it turned out that it wasn't working that way. So I decided mm. that's not where I wanted to go. That's not where the spirit wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I'm going to reroute the ticket. Wow. And I'm heading straight to Ghana. Wow. What a story. I mean, that is just so and compelling. So, and here you are. Yep. And wow. everything, I must honestly say, mm -hmm. 
my trip from Houston all the way here was beautiful. I wow. took it, it was kind of challenging having mm. the children and traveling right. by myself, but I took the flight from um, Houston to uh, JF to La Guada, from La Guada mm. to JFK. I had to take a taxi over to that side of town. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I catch the flight to Casablanca and from Casablanca <laughs> to here. So you can wow. see that that's a like whole a lot. lot of stuff. Yeah. Suitcase and children and all of that. That's a whole lot from, for one person to deal with in traveling. Exactly. But um, the way things were going, but you made I, it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> It we had a nice flight. <laughs> we were busy with dining in the hotel, getting some rest, mm -hmm. having breakfast and lunch. My mom is busy calling for me. <laughs> my sister is calling for me. My brother, mm -hmm. my daughter looking all over Africa for me. And I was there enjoying myself. Oh, that's right. You just enjoy yourself. Take so a So when breeze. I got here, because everything was just lined up, just mm -hmm. lined up. When I got to the airport here, there were somebody waiting for me. Mm -hmm. And they just took my bag. Oh, I was wow. like, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. And then when, when we went through all the custom, mm -hmm. my mom, being from Jamaica, had mm -hmm. her Jamaican passport. Mm -hmm. She went through like a aristocrat. They just treated her like, <laughs> like the royal princess. Red yes, yeah. Yes. So they got the royal treatment. Oh, yes. Yeah. What's with me coming from America? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to do all this picture taking, fingerprinting. Oh, I wow. said, oh, "What?" Mm. But you know, I get that, yeah. and it's okay. You know, that shows you that um, uh, you are royalty yes. from where you're from. Exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that they, don't, they won't um, treat you well mm -hmm. if you're from America, but you're royalty because you're connected. Exactly. You're connected mm -hmm. from Jamaica to uh, Ghana. We're con connected. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got here and I... We didn't even rest. Was, <laughs> we didn't rest. We got in fasting. Friday mm -hmm. morning early and we just sat cool off and we were out on the road. Wow, really? Yeah. Just out on the road like nothing ever happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, all of that, you think you have some kind of jet now. Right, no. that's what I would think. Why? But you guys just like. Yep, kept we going. got out there, we went, we went to uh, get some grocery mm -hmm. and I get to see all of what's going on and. Wow, how I did said, you feel? Wow. I mean, the this is like in being in Jamaica. <laughs> I was like, wow. I even shout out Ghana. I love you. Oh, wow. <laughs> did you feel the same way? Yeah, well, my story is different from hers. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, so yeah. I would say that really the minute you came here, you yeah. felt you felt a love, you felt a joy that really yeah, you never yeah, really yeah. felt. So, mm -hmm. so tell me kind of like three words to describe Ghana for you guys. Three words. Well, um, for me, I feel like this is the bus stop. This is mm -hmm. where it stops. This is where I will um, call home. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when I was planning on coming, I was telling someone, when I get to Ghana, years ago when I was younger, I, um, I'm this type of person. I, I tend to pay attention to my environment mm -hmm. and see how I can give back. Yeah, yeah. So um, I've always felt that when I get to a certain age in life, I would need to go home because after slaving, Mm -hmm. in another man's country you want to know that you don't spend all your years there because exactly. they're not going to give you what you're worth no nope, not at all so <laughs> um i wanted to be at that place where i can give back mm -hmm. and so i felt like if it wasn't going to be jamaica then it had to be africa yeah. so yeah. that's um for me this is my bus stop uh all the 
moving around, moving around that I've done mm -hmm. um, could have told you right away that I wasn't settled. Mm -hmm. um, but now I feel like I'm home. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are and home. And <laughs> <laughs> you guys are home, both of you. You're home. Feel like You're I'm here. home. Yes. And that, that's a beautiful feeling, isn't yes. it? I mean, just being from a place where you really don't feel like you know, sometimes it's home, yeah. but come in here and you just have like a, just an interesting vibe. So what do you mm -hmm. think about the culture? How are you ingratiating yourself in the culture and vibe? Well, well, thus far, um, for, for what it's worth, I, I want to spend the time, the tank, the, the family that really, um, gave me a chance to come and stay he, in their home. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. they're not here, but the people that they connected me with yeah. to help me around. Um, I truly am grateful mm -hmm. to be around them. And for me, I've always been a friendly, open person. Yeah. You know, yeah. I meet you today. You're my friend mm -hmm. and I want to keep connection going. So for me, I don't see it to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like people are people no matter where you are. Yeah. And so true. there's no need to put up a different expectation mm -hmm. of someone um, to say, well, because you're in a different atmosphere, you're yeah. this and you're this. Um, every uh, place has its own issues. Exactly. Exactly. And Very you true. have to appreciate mm -hmm. where you are. But... I don't feel any reason for me not to appreciate Africa mm -hmm. at all. I love what I've seen and I'm enjoying it, enjoying it. And in my <laughs> mind, I'm planning, mm. I'm planning on things that I want to do mm -hmm. for myself and with others as well. And, oh, that's you know, beautiful. it will be a dream fulfilled. I believe that. I'm mm -hmm. such an agreement. He says it will be a dream fulfilled. So on this yep. day, it will be a dream fulfilled for you yep. because you really have that sense. I can see you have that sense of unity and have like, you know, community building, you yep. know, coming together, yep. Yep. you know, between people from the diaspora and people here, you know, and mm -hmm. it can and it can happen. Yep. It really can. I know it can mm -hmm. because while I was in in um, Houston, I kept telling a few of my friends, I said, Africa is calling us back home. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is like, you know, if he, if even if the Bible tells you mm -hmm. to come out of her, that's come enough to tell <laughs> you that you need to get out yes. while you can. It doesn't mean that you won't find things going on in the America has its way of influencing mm -hmm. other people. And, you know, sometimes I am in the community of the YouTubers and mm. I'll watch videos and so on. And where I see that I need to comment, I will comment. Mm -hmm. And for me, I feel like Africa needs to unite. Yes. We should be focused on uniting because of what we have gone through in the past. Mm -hmm. The moment we become united, because that is their fear. Mm -hmm. That's their fear that if we're it united, is. there is so much we can achieve. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so yes. all these other distractions that is going on, that they're trying to uh, mm -hmm. store commotion, different uh, countries in Africa. Let us find ways to divert from that mm. and focus on uniting. Yes. Oh. Because <laughs> the moment we unite mm -hmm. and whatever, all for those who have gone out, maybe through ancestry, um, slavery, or for those who have traveled out because they felt they wanted to try something new or they mm -hmm. feel there were struggles and they wanted to see if they could make it somewhere else. Um, I think that those who have left home freely mm -hmm. to go learn skills, come back home. Yes. And those who have true ancestries being in other countries, 
come back home. You heard that, guys. Let us come back home. <laughs> contribute. You know? Let us work together. Let mm. us build a new Africa. We have to appreciate our differences, mm -hmm. appreciate who we are. And yes, we have learned some things that are not too good, yeah. but we also have good qualities. It's yes. our time. Mm -hmm. It's our time to shine. And it's not about getting back and whatever they have done, but just mm -hmm. focus on uniting, uniting with each other and working together and building Africa to where it needs to be because we're not Sorry. dumb. Mm -mm, we're the smartest all. people mm -hmm. on this earth and see they know that and that's what <laughs> they're afraid of exactly oh my gosh i'm just loving her right now <laughs> sister you said a mouthful right now i mean you just encapsulated so much in just in, in a little short period of time you really did everything you said was so true because yes. coming from the diaspora I feel like you said that this is our time. We're yes. not just coming here by accident. No. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like it's like this boom of us coming exactly. back. Exactly. And that's for a reason. It's for a reason. It's for a reason. God is the most and foremost mm -hmm. in everything. Because Amen. when I was to come, just a little piece I'm giving you. Yes. Please. When I decide my mind um, to come, um, I hear this, that... Um, my my four parents mm -hmm. did not get to make it back mm. to their barn land. Yeah. But I am the remnant of mm. of those who they take away. Yes, you so are. So I have to go and enjoy what they did not enjoy. So mm. that's my purpose here to mm. enjoy what is here for me. Exactly. Whichever way the Lord is going to make me enjoy it, I'm going to enjoy it. Oh, yes. I love that. Yes. I really yes. do. Because you, you can, when you enter even to the airport and you step down and come outside, you can feel even the presence mm -hmm. of God mm -hmm. in the air. It doesn't matter what anything because we are human and you know that we, we, um, we are sinners. You know, but mm. he forgive us for anything. So yes. that don't stop him from make the presence is here. So the atmosphere was so good. So when mm. they ask me, how is it? And I say, oh my God, it is so <laughs> nice. I say, oh. it is nice. Gambia, I mean, Gambia where I went to move my things from right. and come here. It is nice, but... Not here like is my resident. You guys are landowners here, right? Yes. Okay, yes. so yes. with Royal Kingdom Estates, of course. So where do you have your land at? Well, I've got mine at The View. The View. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah. The View. So yeah. how do you like The View? What made you say, this is my piece of property here? Well, um, when, I, when I went there, I saw a lot of herbs, different mm -hmm. herbs that, you know, because we are we tend to do things from a natural perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're feeling any kind of way, we get the herbs and we use it right. to make us feel better. So, but there was a cool sense of feeling when I got there. <laughs> and right away I said, wow, I like this. It's just cool just being up here that even when they took me to the other side, mm -hmm. um, which I did like as well, but it wasn't as cool as um, the, the view. view. As the view. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I can't wait till you guys get to build yes. and you guys will become permanent residents of the view. Yeah. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I have to say, I have enjoyed this interview with you guys. I wish it could go on for longer. I mean, <laughs> just the wonderful peace and vibes yeah. and yes. things that you said yes. have just yeah. been absolutely awesome. So I bless the most high that both of you were able to come on yes. today. Thank, so thank you. you so much. You make it possible. Amen. Amen. It's, an, it's an honor. It really yes. is. So thank you guys so much. And thank, and thank you. thank you guys for tuning in. Please do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, and please share this information with others. Until next time, bye. <laughs> <laughs>